Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another recreational programming session with Amista Azul. Let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream as usual. So we're going to do a red freaking uh, red circle. OK, can anybody tell me? OK, I'm trying to search for an emote uh, red underscore. And there is a lot of um, emotes that start with red underscore, but for some reason at the top, <laughs> it is a surging chat. I mean, I, I don't complain, but who wrote the system for searching emotes? Like, how is that the most, like, I don't understand. <laughs> it, it worked fine before. You can watch any of my previous streams. It worked fine before. It only recently some intern, some summer intern broke this shit. And now it's just like, how is that even relevant? Anyway, so uh, we only started the stream and we already have to deal with the modern software. Uh, live on Twitch. And uh, what are we doing today on Twitch uh, dot, uh, television website? That's a good question. So today we're doing uh, Raylib on web. Right. So I'm going to give the link to where we're doing all of that. All right. Uh, Twitch.tv slash toning. HTTPS. Uh, Twitch.tv slash toning. And I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. And there we go. The stream has officially started. The stream has officially started. How's it going, everyone? So uh, Raylib is a game library that I use for basically like anything related to graphics these days when I work with C and not only C because it's a very simplistic library that is actually uh, easy to interrupt with from any language. We even did uh, this kind of development uh, for, from assembly, right? x86, 64 assembly, right? So that's how simple it is. It is possible to use this library from anywhere. Uh, but uh, some um, aspect of Raylib that I never really explored uh, was uh, web support, right? So apparently one of the platforms that it supports is web right so it has a lot of examples that are also compiled for web uh right so uh, maybe they're using web assembly or something like that i don't really know i never really tried that and that's the point of today's stream i want to try the web support of raylib here's an interesting thing um for the longest time like i kind of thought that uh to do games simple games in c right to do simple games in c you don't really need any library support at all because it is really really simple right it is really really simple some time ago uh i developed um a simple snake game right i developed a simple snake game and i'm gonna actually show you i actually streamed this thing but i couldn't make those streams entertaining enough to post them on youtube so i really apologize to youtube people that you probably never see that because i kind of sucked at making it interesting to watch but uh the game itself you can find it in here right so for people on uh, on YouTube, I'm gonna actually put it in here. So this is basically sorting C C wasm uh, sorting uh, snake C wasm uh, right. And the game looks like this. Uh, right, let me show you. So this is the game basically. Uh, so it's pretty cool. I really make like an emphasis on. Uh, smooth animations and stuff like that, right? So it's actually kind of satisfying to play. I really like that. I really like how satisfying it is to play this game. So you can try it for yourself. And another satisfying thing I actually did is the death animation, right? So essentially, if you <laughs> hit yourself, you actually shatter into pieces, right? So it's actually kind of cool. I really like that. And this game is implemented in pure C entirely. I think I didn't press enter on my, on my chat. I copy pasted the URL, but I didn't press enter. <laughs> Right, so uh, YouTube people actually received the, the URL, but Twitch people, they, they never received it because I never pressed enter. So I'm going to go ahead and just press enter. And there you go. Twitch people now have uh, the link to, to the source code of this entire thing. It's open source. You can do whatever you want with it, except stripping off my name from the license. Again, I'm asking nicely. Do whatever you want, except strip in my name. Anyway, so, uh, and here's the thing. I'm not using any special library support, right? So there is a SDL in here, but this is because I'm cross-compiling this entire game between two platforms. Uh, we can even take a look maybe at the source code. I'm pretty sure I do have a source code in here. So the snake C wasn't blah, blah, blah. So yeah, let's actually take a look at it. So I have some changes, so fuck that. Uh, I'm going to fetch the latest things and I'm going to merge them and everything. 
uh, right, so merge origin uh, master. So uh, essentially, I have sort of like two mains, right? So I have SDL main, uh, which is written in C, and I also has WASM main, right? And the point of these two things is to be two separate entry points to two different platforms, to two different platforms, uh, right? And the game itself is actually platform agnostic, right? So the game itself knows nothing about the platform it's executing in. So what it does, uh, it essentially um, exposes a couple of things that the platform is supposed to call. Th things like uh, game init, game resize when the window got resized and stuff like that, game render, game update, and ga game key down, right? And then it expects certain things from the platform. It expects the platform to provide things like fill rect, uh, stroke rect, fill text, and so on and so forth. And the entire game is implementing using only, I repeat, only this API, nothing else, only this API. So, and the entirety of the game uh, looks like this. So it's almost a thousand lines of code, right? So essentially that's the entirety of the game. It's, it's the snake using only this platform API that is implemented differently depending on the platform, right? If you compile for SDL, right, for native application, uh, all of these things are gonna be implemented like so, right? For instance, platform field text is gonna implement it, it's gonna be implemented like this, right? So that's pretty obvious. And if we're talking about web, uh, that's literally how all of that is implemented. So we literally have platform fill rect, uh, platform stroke rect, and all of that is implemented using HTML canvas. Right. So the game itself doesn't really know where exactly it is executing. Right. So the only thing it knows, it uh, actually knows this simple API. And that doesn't really, again, use any spe special library or anything like that. We can even check that. I can just run SDL main thingy. Uh, it, it doesn't work because, oh, this is actually kind of funny. I compiled this thing long time ago before I reinstalled my Debian, right? So, and that executable actually comes from those times. So I suppose I need to rebuild this entire thing. I can go ahead and try to rebuild this entire thing. And I don't even have Clang anymore. That is very surprising. I don't have Clang, really? Apparently I don't have Clang. Like that, that's really interesting. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just maybe replace Clang. Oh, this is really funny. I do need Clang because only Clang is capable of uh, compiling Wasm shit. But to be fair, I don't really need to compile Wasm right now, right? So I only need to compile the, uh, you know, the SDL stuff. So here I can quite easily uh, do CC and just rebuild this entire thing. And that seems to be working to some extent, but I don't really have SDL TTF, right? So let's actually search for uh, libsdl2 TTF. Uh, maybe, uh, is, that, is that underscore TTF? I don't quite remember. I think that's what it is. Uh, maybe uh, something like this. Yeah, there we go. So TTF dev and what we need to do, we just need to install this entire thing. Uh, unfortunately, I think I don't have sudo. Uh, right, so I'm not in, in sudoers. Yeah, I do remember that. So just a second, I'm gonna do that quickly on a second screen. Yeah, it is installing. So let's install SDL2 TTF. Uh, and it should be enough, hopefully. Right, so let me actually now close all that stuff. Uh, and we should be ready to rebuild everything in here. Are you ready? Okay, so we managed to rebuild the entire game. So now, uh, if I try to do SDL main, so this is how the game looks like, uh, you know, using SDL. And this is the native game, right? So you probably saw um, this game in the browser, and I'm running the same game natively on Linux. And here is an interesting thing. That is without using anything like Electron, right? I would even say this is a different approach to the same problem that Electron is trying to solve. This is really freaking cool. Okay, so what Electron does, right? So it essentially uh, solves the problem of using the same code base for your web frontend, for your web frontend, and for a desktop application, for a native desktop application. How does it solve that problem? It actually basically uh, packages the web browser with your desktop application. That's what it does. And it does, in fact, solve the problem. Right, here is a completely different approach. We have a native application native application, the logic of which is platform independent, the logic of which is platform independent, and we're just compiling that logic uh, 
um, differently to WebAssembly if we want to run it on web or to native application. And that way we don't really ship the browser with our native application because we kind of effectively implement a small part of the browser that we need specifically for our application. A simple native application doesn't need the whole browser. So that means we can implement a very simple part of it, which is creating a window, creating a canvas, and that's pretty much it. So that is a very interesting, I, I wonder if you can actually develop this approach further and compete with Electron. That is a very cool idea. That is a very cool idea. And in that case, like you probably write your front end in native languages like C and C++ and stuff like that, right? So, and then using this specific, uh, specific approach, you can just like ship a native application that is actually faster than the web one, like actually faster than the web one, not just like, um, you know, work outside of the browser. You know what I mean? That is very interesting. So I think I need to think about that approach. Maybe, maybe one of the projects that they're gonna have, like a serious actual project is gonna be like this kind of framework that allows you to create this, uh, applications that work both in browsers and natively, but all of that without the Electron. Uh, right, so that's kind of a cool idea. And yeah, again, because of that, uh, because it's really easy to do this kind of stuff, I thought that I don't even need Rayleap, right? Because uh, HTML5 Canvas, HTML5 Canvas kind of already implements uh, everything that you may need from a very simple 2D game and if you want to go into the 3D, it is very easy to create, uh, right, it is very easy to create the, you know, WebGL context, uh, WebGL context. So, but maybe Rayleap actually does something different and maybe there is a lot of convenient things for these kind of applications in Rayleap. And that's exactly what I would like to explore today, right? So that's exactly what I would like to explore today. Uh, so, yeah. Um, let me switch switch my stuff and close this window. Um, <clears throat> I compiled the Rayleap app as an Android app and as x86-64 native Linux app, no platform code needed. Yeah, exactly. It is actually quite interesting like how cross-platform can you be by just writing simple code to the point that you really don't need a browser to be cross-platform, right? You really don't need the browser to be cross-platform, right? You just need to know how to uh, abstract away platform API, which is a skill of its own, uh, right? But when you master that, it's just like, yeah, uh, you can just abstract away only the things that you need and that kind of makes it portable. Because in, in case of a snake, right? Uh, in case of a snake, so if I want to port my game to a different platform to Android, I just have to implement six functions, right? That's like literally everything I have to do. I just have to implement six functions somehow for that specific platform. And the rest of the game, the rest almost uh, thousand of lines, 845, they're going to be the same. They're going to be absolutely the same. So that's pretty cool, I think. Uh, to be fair, like I think cross-platform applications should kind of move towards that direction rather than shipping browser with the desktop. It's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of wasteful. Uh, and that approach is actually way more cross-platform than shipping browser everywhere because uh, this approach will work in places where the browser simply does not fit. Right? So, and here's an interesting thing. Um, uh, Ray Leap, like I, I'm following Ray San on Twitter and he reposted a lot of interesting things. Apparently people uh, ported Ray Leap to uh, Sega Dreamcast. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sega Dreamcast. Like, can you ship like an like, entirely standard compliant browser on a Sega Dreamcast? Like, I mean, well, you can say that it's a dead platform, but I mean, it's just like, I'm just saying that. Uh, you know, it's more more um, applicable approach to more platforms. So yeah, a lot of examples uh, on, in Rayleigh, they work on, in web, uh, they work on Sega Dreamcast. So that's really cool. That's how cross-platform it is. You can run it on Dreamcast, you can run it in a browser. So can you run a browser in a Dreamcast? I don't, I don't think so. Maybe you can. Mm. You know what would be cool? what kind of cool technology uh, would be. Uh, so when you're making an Electron app, 
you strip off part of the browser that your application doesn't need. Is that something that the Electron is capable of doing, by the way? Does it have some sort of a tool that analyzes your source code in JavaScript or whatever, identifies which parts of the browser you use and strips off the ones that you don't use? Is there something like that for Electron, by the way? Do, do we have any professional web developers in the chat? Um, uh, that sounds like a basic optimization. Uh, would be surprised if it do doesn't do that. I have a strong suspicion that it doesn't do that. I have a strong suspicion. You know why? Uh, I didn't never use Discord my uh, Discord desktop myself, but I've heard reports from people that say that Discord is like uh, you know the election version of Discord is actually has dev tools. But the Discord developers do a lot of tricks to actually discourage you from opening DevTools, which means that they can't just disable it. Right. They, they, for some reason, they can't just disable it. So they do a lot of different tricks to like detect that you open DevTools and automatically close it and stuff like that. So they, they can't disable it, apparently. They need to do all of these hoops to discourage you opening DevTools. Because if they really didn't want you to open DevTools, they would just remove it, but they can't. So, yeah, that means it probably doesn't do that. It probably doesn't do such a basic optimization. Uh, but in 2024, I suppose nobody cares. <clears throat> there is a boolean for DevTools. I don't know if that is true. Searching. Okay, so that would be interesting. That would be interesting. Maybe they do want to... Uh, to have dev tools, but I mean, if you're shipping the thing to the user and you don't want the user to use that, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyways, who cares about that electron? So let's take a look at the Rayleigh. Let's take a look at the Rayleigh. Uh, so how do I even fucking do that? So I suppose uh, we can go to uh, Raysan. And let's go to the releases, right? So there are different releases here for different things. And I suppose maybe, uh, maybe there is a release for web specifically, right? So if you take a look at the downloadable things in here, uh, right, so there's a Linux, okay, WebAssembly, there you go. So there's a WebAssembly, so let's go ahead and just download the WebAssembly thing. Yeah. So uh, prob, uh, do we have Raylib? Uh, okay, so let's actually create Raylib wasm prob. Uh, really wasn't proper and we're gonna just download this into that thing and let's see what's how it's gonna work all right uh, so what do we have okay so it probably uses like a clang thingy clang system so is that really web assembly where is the JavaScript implementation and everything okay so let's actually unpack all of these things it's, it's, it's a little bit bizarre like why is it so small uh right so how exactly does it implement that so if we take a look at the file it's just an archive uh right so it's probably some stuff with the web assembly so there is including here and uh let's read simple to use web assembly right so web assembly there's nothing much about web assembly okay uh so maybe what we have to use we have to use clang but i don't have clang so i need to install it so let me search for clang so do I even have Clang on this specific system? Search Clang. So I'm using ST and in ST you can you cannot actually scroll. So this simple terminal does not implement scrolling whatsoever. If you want to scroll, you have to use Tmux. Right? So <laughs> it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't. Okay, so there is a straight up clang. Uh, but I mean, I already use, uh, you know, t uh, team Ux, uh, so it's, it's not a big deal for me. Uh, okay, so I'm going to quickly install it off screen. So just a second. All right, installing. Installing. <sighs> okay, installing clang. It's interesting how you are supposed to even use this thing. Um, how you are supposed to even use these things. I wonder if I have things like Wabbit. Um, so do you guys know what is Wabbit? Mm -hmm. Wabbit. 
<laughs> West Alabama Bank and Trust. Hell yeah. Sweet home Alabama. Uh, so WebAssembly. <laughs> yes. So it's a WebAssembly binary kit toolkit. Uh, so, and it allows you to actually disassemble like a binary web assembly things. So I don't remember if I still have that. So there's things like wasm to C, uh, there's a what to wasm, wasm to what, um, what, wasm to what, wasm to what? Wasm to what? Motherfucker. All right, so I think Clang is ready. Uh, so let's actually create like a simple, uh, you know, WebAssembly thing. Yeah. So, um, and of course, I was talking about Wabbit for a reason. So do I have Wasm? So there is a Wasm time. Apparently I do have Wasm time. I don't have Wasm to, uh, to what, but I'm pretty sure I can have Wabbit installed somewhere. So let's actually search for Wabbit. Um, okay, so I do in fact have Wabbit, so I'm gonna go ahead and just install Wabbit as well. Um, so yeah, of course, let's do sudo. Mm -hmm. So, and let's install Wabbit. Wabbit, 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 Wabbit. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So that allows me to have things like uh, wasm to, to what? Wasm to what? Uh, that's pretty poggers, I think. That's pretty poggers. So let's go ahead and just include uh, array lib.h and uh, why do you have me, why do you have this strip? Okay, so let's return nothing and uh, init window. I suppose, like how do you initialize window specifically in array lib? That's a very interesting question. Anyway, so uh, we're gonna have something like this and uh, so hello from web assembly hello from web assembly and then we're going to close the window right so we're going to close the window so i expect all these functions to be supported uh to be supported on on the web version right so because you want to have like a universal code um you know that you can just like compile to web assembly or something like that uh so and of course we're going to do something like while a window should uh not close uh, window, yeah, well, window should not close. We just do begin drawing, right? So begin drawing, then we end drawing, then we clear background with red, and that should be it. So you know what? You know what? So this is, um, you know, web assembly stuff. So maybe it would make sense for me to maybe move this entire thing somewhere here, right? And have the second web assembly. Uh, that is for Linux, so I can kind of compare them. Uh, right, so I want to have both of them in here. So first I'm going to compile the native part, and then I'm going to try to compile the WebAssembly part, uh, just to compare them. All right. So please don't tell me I'm supposed to use mscripten to compile this. Thing. Please don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to be hella disappointed. I'm going to be hella disappointed. But I'm starting to kind of feel like you need to have mscripten to actually do this kind of thing. And it's just like a little bit disappointing, not gonna lie, uh, a little bit disappointing. So you have to sadly instru instructions here. I'm not looking into that, at least for now, not looking into that, uh, but maybe, maybe I should look into that. Okay, so let, let's take a look. Um, working for web. Dude, for real? Dude! I demonstr- I'm so freaking disappointed. I demonstrated very simple example. This is without any Raylib and Mscripten. Raysan, you betrayed simplicity. You betrayed simplicity, straight up. <clears throat> That's how mad I am. <laughs> I actually sp a little spilled a little bit of tea on myself. That's how mad I am. Oh my god. <sighs> Anyways, 
So, um, yeah, first of all, what I want to do, let's actually make sure that this thing works on native, right? So let's make sure. Uh, I'm going to create a make file. Um, so let's do it like this. And I'm going to do clang o main main.c, right? And let's actually go and uh, try to compile this entire thing. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't know where is the raylib. Uh, so let's actually tell it where is the raylib. Uh, it is located, I mean, specifically the include folder include folder so let's actually go here uh, okay so that seems to be okie dokie and then i do l raylib raylib lm and that should be about it so then it will complain that it can't find any of these things which is fine uh, i can forgive that unlike betraying simplicity and buying into that m script and <sighs> Anyways, uh, so, okay, so really, you used SO version of this thing, right? You literally use SO version, even though there was, is there any way for me to tell you, bruh, use raylib.a. Um, so I don't remember how you say that. I think you have to say something like lib or what not does anybody remember how to tell the compiler uh just bruh use the stat yeah i think that's how you do that yo i remember how to do that holy shit yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so essentially what it did this motherfucker picked the so version of the library it picked so uh, picked the so version but they explicitly said use the static one so it, it actually did that so that's pretty cool uh so it's kind of like a random random piece of knowledge that I kind of like have in my language model in the brain, right? So all of a sudden it just like uh, appeared out of nowhere. So that th thing seems to be working. So maybe uh, we're gonna have something like native. Let's actually call it native. Though the highlighting uh, fucked up everything. So maybe <laughs> maybe I can do something like this. Or maybe even, you know what? You know what? Nah, you have to include this uh, thing. Emacs didn't expect that you can have uh, colons in the command line arguments. Emacs just like, didn't expect that shit to happen at all. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty interesting. Anyways, so uh, let me try to do this kind of thing. Um, let me try to do this kind of thing. And we have, there we go, we have a uh, native thing. And I suppose if I want to have a uh, main web, right? So main web, I'm going to have something like this. And that is not going to be enough, right? So obviously here, we will have to redirect to WebAssembly. Right, we are redirecting to... Uh, web as embly web as web as right and so the way you compile to web assembly in uh, in clang you have to say that the target is going to be web assembly so build there we go so we have a lot of things in here so for instance yeah so we have to do target was in 32 oh yeah here's an interesting thing here's an interesting thing to compile this simple snake game to WebAssembly, i had to say no standard library libraries because standard libraries are not implemented for WebAssembly. they're not implemented for WebAssembly, and that's probably the reason why you need to have them scripting that is probably literally the reason why you need to have them scripting to implement the standard libraries that are not implemented. But there is another side to the story, honestly. There is another side to the story. Uh, right, you, if you rely completely on Raylib interface, your application doesn't really need standard library, does it? Unless it's doing something platform specific, like working with files and everything. But, um, Right, if you just want to display something, like you don't need standard library, right? I didn't use a standard, uh, like C library to implement this. And the entirety of the game is under a thousand lines of code. Uh, SQRT, well, I mean, this is a math library. This is a math library. 
uh, right. So, but maybe it's a part of the standard library. You, you can argue that it's a part of the standard library. So you, you know how I solved that? Do you know how I solved the, the lack of math library? Uh, right, I can show you. Um, I can show you. I think I didn't, I just didn't use a security. Yeah. I think I literally didn't use a security. That's how I solved it. <laughs> right, so let's actually see. Um, where is the, where is the game? Yeah, there we go. Uh, SQRT. Oh! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit, this is so fucking bad. I don't remember doing that, what the fuck? <laughs> this is so fucking base, like, what the fuck? Ah! Just... <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, we don't have square root on our platform! Get out of here! Implement square root yourself! <laughs> was, it, was I that much of a chat back then? I don't fucking remember actually, it's just like... Just <laughs> okay, the, the way I usually do that, the way I usually do that is that I would make a security part of the platform, um, right? part of the platform and i would just call to javascript right so it's, it's not even that fast it's probably slow but i mean it's fast enough for this application right so okay listen listen so these kind of conversations are so hypocritical i swear to god right so we're talking about oh no this algorithm is slow and then we're using electron for desktop applications excuse me like what is this even conversation? Like, how is that slow if you use an electron for desktops? Like, this is absolutely hypocritical. Right. Wait a second, I think I even made a tweet about that some time ago when I was developing port. Yeah. Yeah, I was, like, I was developing port. It's just like, when I was developing port, and uh, my target platform was directly generating x86-64 assembly. Right, so that was my target platform. And uh, like a lot of people told me, bruh, bruh, you have to use LLVM, bruh, bruh, because all the optimization, bruh. And the same motherfucking people go then to their 9, uh, nine to 5 job and program in Python. Right. They program in Python on their 9 to 5 job and then come to me and tell me, bruh, you have to use LLVM because optimization. So it's just like, and there's a lot of conversations like that. Yeah, it is slow. So what? <laughs> uh, anyways, who cares exactly? So the fact that Python is the most popular language on planet Earth kind of invalidates all of the conversation about performance, honestly, including all of the, uh, including the ones even I started. So yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> so what do we have in here? Yeah, so in case of a math library, what I want to say is that we, we can just like bind to JavaScript functions, right? So we can literally bind to math SQRT. So it's not that, not that big of a deal. And this is something that I've done before. Uh, this is something that I've done before. So that's totally uh, fine. Uh, that's uh, totally fine. So, and uh, because we need the standard library, right? So we won't be able to just compile this entire thing, right? So we literally won't be able to just compile this entire thing. So we can try that. Sure, sure. We, we, can, we can just try that. So here is the build sh. And when I'm going to go to make file, right? So, and then I can say uh, target wasn't 32. By the way, Wasm is probably the only 32 like platform that is out there, right? So maybe in embedded, uh, people still use 32 bits, but I mean, like any consumer machine is just 64, but Wasm is still 32. And so there is a version of Wasm that is 64, but I think it's still in development. It's still experimental. And the reason... <laughs> And the reason is because you can't address 64 bits. So uh, so there is still ARMS that's 32. Okay, so. And the reason is because you can't address 64 bits 
with the regular JavaScript numbers. You must use big nums for that. <laughs> this is such a dumb reason. It's so fucking funny. I just like can't. Like when I was researching how to do Wasm64 and I needed that because I was trying to compile Jai to, to Wasm and Jai supports only 64 bits and, and everything. I couldn't stop fucking laughing for the reason. Like, it's so goddamn dumb. In 2023, it was 20... I think it was even 2021, 2022 or something. Yeah. <sighs> it is what it is. It isn't what it isn't. Is it not? I think it is. Okay, so here we're going to have like a native uh, web. Right, so we're going to have a native web, and I'm going to try to compile this piece of shy sung. And what does it say? Uh, Wasm LD does not exist? Really? I don't have a Wasm LD 14, so it wants to have Wasm LD. Really? So I need to have Wasm LD? Is that something I have to install separately, though? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so there's a Wabbit. And there's some sort so of other things. Because I remember it just worked. Oh, for the snake, I never really needed to link anything. Right, I never really needed to link anything. That is not that bad of an idea, honestly, actually. Yeah, I'll consider that. I'll consider porting a visualizer to web. That actually may open up a lot of interesting like opportunities. Like imagine instead of like files using links to YouTube. DMCA. DMCA. <clears throat> anyway, I'm in, in the middle of Siberian Taiga, so you, you can't get me. Uh, so. <laughs> Let, let me start the uh, the Tmux. Uh, let me start the Tmux. Search uh, Wasm. Wasm, 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 Wasm. Bikane. Binairen, compiler and tool chain of structure for WebAssembly. I wonder if that's where it is located. I wonder. Uh, so, okay. Um, wasm ld not found. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Like wasm ld not found after performing brew install. Wabbit, 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 wabbit. Uh, so LLVM uh, binary. So, uh, uh, -huh. uh, -huh. so it's part of the LLVM, right? Um, but they don't have a little bit. Do I not? Mm. Quasi lipsy, quasi lipsy. Uh, so installation first, I guess. So we can just take a look at the little bit. I wonder how for how long it's going to take. Uh, so a little bit. Yeah, there's also. A lot of things in here, like LLVM 14, modular compiler and toolchain technologies. Okay, so it wants to have a LLVM 14 because it was a Wasm LD something something. something. Okay, so let's actually install LLVM uh, 14, and uh, so yeah, we'll probably have to do it like this. A lot of things needs to be installed first. A lot of things need to be installed first. Huh. That is a bizarre. That is absolutely bizarre. So uh, I literally don't have WasmLD. So maybe it is. I do have it on my machine, maybe, but it's somewhere else, right? So like people say, uh, file executable uh, WasmLD or something. Maybe yeah. Let's actually try to find that file. Uh, paths precede the expression um, type f executable name yeah there we go so there's a wasm interp uh, validate and some other things 
Um, oh, install LLD14. Yeah, probably. So we can give it a try. Sure. Uh, permission denied. <laughs> uh so let's see search lld uh -huh. lld lvm based linka so by the way apt search is kind of useless don't you think i think it's kind of useless because it's like it never actually shows you what you're looking for like i was looking for wasm ld uh, right, and it never, sh maybe it showed me LLD14, uh, maybe I didn't notice, but I mean, <laughs> it also likes to show a lot of things that are kind of irrelevant. Uh, right, so they're kind of irrelevant. We're installing. Uh, so wasm uh, LD14, look at that, thank you, thank you, a random viewer who actually suggested to install this thing, I really appreciate that. Okay, good. so uh, let me see. So I know that it's not going to work, by the way. I know that it's not going to work. I just want to see what kind of problems I'm going to bump into if I just try to do that in a very naive way. Uh, yeah, there we go. Unable to find library, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it was also trying to find LM and some other things. It, it's funny that it couldn't find this stuff, right? So that's kind of weird. Not going to lie. So let me find file at point. Yeah. Uh huh. So isn't it that? Yeah, here it is. And if I go into here, is that a leap? Yeah. So what's up with that, my friend? What's up with that? Why could why it couldn't find anything? Um. No such. Yeah, and, and also look at that. It can cannot find thirty one dot o. And everything, and as far as I know, CRT, uh, CRT 1.0 is like uh, sort of it contains the actual entry point, like it in initializes runtime and stuff like that. So, yeah, RT built ins, it also cannot find any of these things, but I'm pretty sure I need to install some things for that stuff to actually work, All right? So, I'm pretty sure I have to install that stuff to, to actually work. You can search across Debian packages contained using apt file. Maybe I can, but I can never remember how to use it, right? apt file was an LD. Is this like, like how do I use that? Search. Uh, is it going to search? Okay, so that was useful. Thank you. So also tools and everything seems to be installed. Uh, right. I wonder where we can find... So that's actually very useful. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, apt file search apt file search and we're gonna just do that uh, like this is it contained anywhere um so yeah we have l so maybe we should install some of these things right so we definitely should install the 14th one because that's the one that it searches for yo that is very cool okay so let's go ahead and do that mm -hmm. so i'm gonna install this library mm, maybe i should actually just have the this thing open all the time. All right, installing the runtime. It's already installed, by the way. So it seems to be already installed. And uh, no, it still cannot find that. Uh, so even though cannot open. Yeah, so there's a wazi lib. Yeah, it doesn't have any of that. Even though we said find this thing and it says that it is available, apt file search. Uh, in here, all right, apt file search in here, uh, and yeah, here it is, and I installed this thing. I literally installed this thing, and that didn't help, so it still complains about all of these things. So, yeah, apparently, you do need mscripten to just build this entire thing, to just build this entire thing, which is kind of a shame, which is kind of a shame, and I do not approve that because I believe it is possible to implement Raylib way way simpler the same way i implemented snake like i do believe that it is possible to do it like that right so essentially just implement all of these functions for WebAssembly. so the only difference is going to be is that you would have to organize your entry point differently right so the, the, i suppose the advantage of this approach of using inscription and stuff like that you can take your entry point as it is 
you can tr take your point, uh, entry point as it is and magically compile and it will just going to be a thing that you can run in the browser right so okay that's pretty cool but it adds a lot of moving parts to that uh right so and even an entry point has to be changed seriously even an entry point has to be changed i'm dis I, I keep getting disappointed i keep Getting disappointed. Okay, let's install mscripten. Let's install mscripten. Um, so maybe we're gonna follow the instructions. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm gonna actually go and put these instructions in uh, the description. Right. So that's the that's the thing. That's how you're supposed to do that. Um, install mscripten SDK from. Uh, yeah. I think uh, I think I know how to do that. I think I already done that before. M scripting S D K S D K. So uh, I'm going to just go to Nux software. What do we have in here? Git clone this mother flipper in here. So I wonder if it's going to be too much. I could probably do something like depth one. So let's actually not clone everything. Uh, so we're going to do a shallow clone. M S D K. Uh, right, and what's going to be the next thing? So it does have MSDK uh, in here, right? It does have MSDK in here. Uh, let's install latest. Latest. It is unpacking something, everyone, using Python sc uh, 3 script. Python 3 script. Okay, so l let's actually see what else you need to do. Compile Raylib library. Before compiling your game, uh, right, so you must recompile for HTML5 generating. Well, I mean, we already have this thing. Uh, so we probably don't need to do that. Using make files, it doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, bruh. Building examples for web. At this point, if you optionally want to compile, provide it examples. Okay, finally. Command line compilation. So, MCC. Oh my God! It tries to hide literally. Oh my God! I see. Oof! 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 It's just like it's one of these situations. Bro, just run this thing and forget about it. Don't think how it works. Don't think how it works, bro. Trust me, don't think about it. It's one of those things, I see. God damn it. Um, so, and step four is also important, changing entry point. Uh, so, but they didn't provide any code, so it was kind of weird. Main reason to avoid the use the standard uh, loop is related to the way browsers work. The browser needs to control the executed process and just allow a single update draw execution so execution could be controlled and lock while required more details here to avoid the loop code must be slightly adapted uh so for the simple example on the code refactoring for web check uh okay so yeah using mscript and doesn't even make the whole process easier it doesn't even make the whole process easier in fact it just like yeah Ims oh oh my god oh my god uh, I, you know what I want to do? You know what I want to do? I want to implement a very simple small demo. Very simple small demo. Maybe, you know, the, the classical bouncing off of the edges and stuff like that. And implement a small subset of Raylib. A small subset of Raylib that allows this demo work in a style of snake game. I really want to try to do that as a sort of like a proof of concept, right? So just to demonstrate that you don't really need that much of a complicated setup, at least for myself, right? So I just want to see like, where is the pitfall, right? So why do you really need this much of a complicated um, setup? Because as I already demonstrated, you don't need anything, right? So you only need the clang. You don't even need a linker, by the way. You don't even need a linker. So, but the only problem here is that in that case, you would have to implement Raylib in JavaScript primarily. Uh, you would have to implement uh, Raylib in JavaScript primarily. 
Um, so, uh, to, 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 to. so the, okay, so I'm actually kind of half joking, right? So Raysan is a really cool developer and he does in fact value simplicity. The problem here is that the way I implemented Snake is really unconventional way of doing that nobody really documented properly how to do that and i kind of stitched that approach together right so it's sort of like nobody really does it this way and because of that nobody really knows that it could be this simple yeah that's the problem like nobody knows that it could be this simple um so people are afraid that there is no standard library right people are really afraid that there is no standard library but here's the thing, before being afraid of the lack of the standard library, you really need to ask yourself, how much of the standard library do I use? And if the answer is none, the question is, what are you afraid of then? You don't use the standard library, right? Because here, I don't use the standard library at all. Um... So it's unconventional doesn't mean it needs to be like that. Yeah, exactly. So... I really want to see like if ArrayLib could be implemented like simpler um, and without Imscript. But first of all, I want to make the Imscript version work, right? So, but I feel like I'm going to have a little bit of a hard time doing that. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, so without, so there's with Asyncify, there's some sort of Asyncify, not Asyncify. Oh my God. Oh my God. Shell edged. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. There's a lot of web crap. <sighs> Anyways, so let's actually take a look at this thing, right? So, um, so MCC did it did it work, right? So I I know that we, with mscripten, with mscripten, you also have to uh, activate the latest one, right? So we have to activate the latest one. Uh, so the latest one was uh, successfully activated, and as far as I know, it already kind of. Uh, no, it didn't. Uh, so this can be, so I want to do this thing. All right. So to bring this thing to my shell. So that means now here I have MCC, right? So it's taking some time to load up. So that means it does exist. And I suppose I also want to add that to my bash profile. So every time I open a new terminal, so I do have MCC all the time. Right. So that makes sense. So we installed uh, mscripten, right? So that's how easy it is. That's how it is, it is. Just run a bunch of scripts and don't think about it, dummy dum dum. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All right, so th th that should be enough, I think. That should be enough. Um, and, um, yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Now, so I wonder if I still have MCC. No, I don't have MCC because bash profile is not applicable in here. So that literally means that for the time being, I have to start Emacs from within this shell. Okay, that is that is totally fine. Okay, sure, MCC. Yeah, there we go. So here is MCC. Uh, now, uh, so probe array lib wasm probe. Uh huh. So main web. Okay, so if the output is game.html, so I suppose that's gonna be the target then. So this is the target. And dependency is gonna main be main.c. Uh, all right, so game.html. Um, so maybe I'm gonna rename this to game. What's actually called game? I kinda like the fact that it's called game. Uh, right, so it's going to be something like that, and let's query replace main with game. Uh huh. Boom. So game HTML game .c, make it small. Path to this thing. Um, so it was something like uh, array. Can you auto complete, please? Please, please, please auto complete, please. Stupid Emacs, stupid mother flipping Emacs, so dumb. Okay, just a second, just a second, please. Uh huh. So then we have lib and lib array lib uh, dot a, right? So that's what we had. Uh huh. So then we have include path. 
Um, why it puts this stuff in here? This is a, such a weird command line. Wait a second. So why do we have really like twice? <laughs> this is the. <laughs> I apologize. Like what? <laughs> Use gl. Okay, so there's also shell file. It's a little bit sus. Not gonna lie. It's a little bit sus. I feel like it, it should not be the thing, right? So if we are... Yeah, so it should be just like that. Um, so and also the order is kind of weird. Uh, the order is a little bit, a little bit weird. Um, you know what? I think... I just, I just like to start maybe with simply trying to compile it like that, right? So there's a lot of weird command lines that I just like don't understand like why, why does it have to be like that let's actually start with something simple so no ruled a target main C because this is called game right so uh, okay so and let's take a look at this stuff okay so uh, I really like to sort of incrementally work on this thing right so I encounter an error I fix an error and so on and so forth it's just like kind of easier for me to to process uh, right and I also like to understand each individual command line argument that I put in there right it's also kind of important for me Right. As you probably noticed, I don't like to copy paste this uh, single command and don't think about it. It's just like it's not for you. It's not. You don't think about it. Smarter people than you already thought everything out. Eh, eh. Don't think about it. Eh. <clears throat> Sorry. So and then we want to uh, probably just do this kind of thing, right? So we want to do this kind of thing. And uh, let me see. So uh, right. So unable to find. Yeah, that is. That, that in fact makes sense so that means now uh right mm. okay so aha uh -huh. so and here is the thing so it complains about jail of w notice that oh my god if they used the approach that I used in Snake, they could have just used WebGL for the web part of the of the Raylib. So, mm, that is really interesting. That is really interesting. It's just like, yeah, I can see a lot of ways this entire thing could be simplified. I see a lot of ways this thing could be simplified. Anyway, um, so I don't know what is S, but I suppose it's just like. The thing that tells you to to not use GL of W, right? So okay, so it's doing things. It is doing things. It's doing a lot of things actually. Um, it's compiling. By the way, so it's done. Uh, apparently, it is. Apparently, it is. So we have game JS which is i suppose maybe it includes the entirety of the how is that a web assembly if we have 170 kilobytes of javascript maybe the L look at that the web assembly module is smaller than the javascript part <laughs> Am I complaining too much? Like, it's just like, it's like, th this is the kind of things that really bother me because I'm a software engineer, right? So engineer works with systems, right? So in the systems are different parts that interact with each, other, with each other, right? So, and I'm looking at this, all of these systems and everyone tells me that, like, don't think about it, don't think about it. It's just like, <laughs> But I can't help myself but notice all of that stuff. It's just like, uh, am I am I weird? Let's open it up. Let's let's open it up. You know what's funny is that I'm pretty sure we uh, won't be able to open it. It depends on how exactly they fetch the was a module, right? So. Um, Fetching the WASA module may require doing that specifically through HTTP server because a certain content type needs to be set up, otherwise the browser 
Um, <laughs> okay, web support for Rayleigh is literally all the things I was actually afraid of. I was, it was, I mean, but I mean, for, for my thing, for, for the snake, you also need a server, but I know a way to actually make it not require a server, by the way. You can kind of bake um, WebAssembly modules into JavaScript. You can ta basically take, a, uh, you know, WebAssembly bytecode and save it as JavaScript array. Uh, so <laughs> I think I even done that before. I think I even done that before, right? So I think I, I think I even have a project somewhere that demonstrates that you have a single JavaScript file. It's a single JavaScript file, but it's also written in WebAssembly. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. But anyway, so all right, let's go ahead and try to open it and see how it is going to fail. Right? I just want to see how it is. Oh, is, so. <laughs> That's why it takes so much space because it's it's powered by and script and script and script and script and script. I see. So okay. That's why. That's why. Anyways, so Python 3 M HTTPS HTTP server 69 or 69. Oh wait a second, I did it incorrectly. My neighbors are doing something, something kinky. Uh, 69, 69. <laughs> because it's not indexed, I understand that. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I think uh, another thing we forgot to do actually is um, uh, yeah I think we need to include all of these things in here so I syncify uh, and and that stuff so let's actually try to recompile uh, of course let's do minus b um, shell file was not found huh shell file I have no idea what the fuck is a shell file so maybe fuck it. How about fuck it? All right, so let's let's just forget about that. It just works. It just works. Mm -hmm. Any twerkers in the chat? Twerker class. <laughs> So, uh, local host 6969. Uh, you need to edit, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, it's it's not about uh, ex exception thrown in, in JavaScript. Uh, GL bind texture, blah, 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 so it, it couldn't. Uh, okay, go. so yeah, let's go and just update this entire shice. So, um, init window, uh, set FPS, yeah. draw frame wait module function declaration update and draw one frame so you kind of uh... i see i see i'm gonna fucking cry chat i'm gonna fucking cry <laughs> I sure, sure. That's that's the modern software development, right? That's the modern software development. So, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I just follow the instruction and it just works. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that. Sojin, Sojin, you're being unreasonable, Sojin. Sojin, you're being unreasonable. 
Uh, I'm switching set main loop. Um, yeah, I think I think we'll be doing that. So essentially, I also this is something that I had to organize myself also in Snake. Um, all right, so let's try to maybe rebuild this entire thing and uh, let's go. Compiling. Compiling. If you pass a syncify flag, you don't need to update your C code. But why chat trolling me? Right, why chat is trolling me right now? I don't quite understand my defined. Uh, all right, so yeah, so this shit didn't work. Okay, so apparently uh, that's really bizarre. That is really, really bizarre. So it's also, if we take a look at the, um, you know, at the console, right? So can it read properties? So bind texture is something with bind texture. Uh, right, it's something with bind texture. Uh, so that is kind of bizarre. So something with a syncify. So people say that maybe a syncify should not be a thing. Uh, let's not actually pass it in there. Maybe that will fix it. Uh, right. Maybe that will fix it. Mm, of course, we have to wait half of an hour for this thing to compile. Right. Uh, nope. <laughs> I don't really know what's up with that. So did I miss anything, by the way? So maybe I just like did something incorrectly. Um, so LPath, so tell the linker that the game uses GL of the uh, three internally and must be li linked automatically, provides the implementation. Okay. Uh, all web needs a shell structure to load and run the game by default script has a shell script, which can but we can provide our own. So we, we don't really have to provide anything in here. Um, so do we compile Raylib with script? And I'm using Raylib uh, that is downloaded from the, from the GitHub, right? So I downloaded it from the GitHub and that's the one I'm using, right? So uh, here it is. So, so this is WebAssembly and here is the thing. So, and I kind of expect this thing to, to work, to just work, but it doesn't. It actually doesn't work. Um, so do I have to build Raylib myself? I thought I could just like download this thing and it will just work. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Like I don't really know. Uh, we, we can take a look at the move init window inside. We can try actually. Um, init window. So maybe don't call init window at all, right? So something like that. Uh, we can try that, but I feel like we, we still need to initialize this thing. Um, I feel like we still need to initialize this thing. By the way, I'm already telling you, I'm not using uh, web support from Raylib, like for, for my uh, purposes. Like I'm already telling you, so I'm not using it uh, if I if I need something. Yeah, so you, you can't use this kind of thing. Uh, right, so something. So the only hypothesis that I have is that we need to build Raylib ourselves. That's the only hypothesis I have. It's just like, we need to build it ourselves. Um, so maybe there is some sort of a discrepancy between how it was built, um, right, and everything, but it's just like, yeah, it's kind of it's weird. I don't think it's gonna work that easily. I don't think it's gonna work. So, uh, you know what I wanna do? You know what I wanna do? I wanna make a small break. I wanna make a small break and make a cup of tea. And after the break, I kinda wanna implement my idea, my vision, my vision of how I would implement Raylib, right? So, I mean, web support for Raylib. So I'm not going to implement like the entirety of Raylib, obviously, right? So uh, only a small subset, uh, but I want to see if this approach, if this approach that I used in Snake is applicable to Raylib as well, because I feel like it is, like everything is just like points out that, yeah, you can do it like that. You, you can actually do it like that. Because if I write my game entirely using Raylib, I don't really need um, standard library of C. So, and that means you can have like a second version of Raylib implemented entirely in JavaScript. 
that just implements this interface. Uh, and it should be much simpler to work with. It is much simpler to work with, I'm telling you. Um, so anyway, I, I didn't manage to make it work. I'm pretty sure that I just have to build uh, really myself with my version of Emscripten. Maybe there is some discrepancy between the versions of Emscripten. I don't really know. Uh, but I kind of like I kind of spent too much time on this kind of stuff and I want to do something interesting if you know what I mean I want to do something interesting so let's make a small break uh, let's make a cup of tea and we're gonna go on an adventure and explore and alternative approaches to implementing the you know platform independent applications um all right so uh, let's go ahead and try to do something uh, cool let's try to do something cool uh, I'm gonna go back uh, with my think right so i'm actually gonna leave set target fps so i want to have like the minimum example that i can play with essentially right so just the minimum example uh and uh, let me see so we're not gonna have anything except this right so this is the only thing we're gonna have and uh here uh, i'm gonna remove all of that uh, m script and stuff and i'm gonna just try to rebuild the thing natively and if i run this thing natively uh, it, it creates the window. So that's actually pretty cool. So uh, let me remove this wasm thing, this HTML and this JavaScript thing, right? So we don't need any of that anymore. Uh, and we're going to just try to compile game wasm based on game.c, right? So we're going to start with just uh, clang um, and o game wasm game.c. Uh, and I'm going to say that the target is going to be wasm32, right? So essentially what it will do, it will just like try to compile the C code into, uh, you know, wasm module, right? Just just the wasm module. Uh, and if I try to do make game wasm, right? Make game wasm. As you can see, it doesn't know where is arraylib.h. It doesn't know where is arraylib.h, but that's totally fine. So we can actually use the headers from the Linux version, right? I don't think it really matters like which headers we use because they're literally the same regardless of the platform or anything like that. Okay, so as you can see, it cannot find uh, it cannot find any standard libraries or anything like that. And that's one of the problems that we had. To circumvent that problem, what we have to do, we have to say uh, no standard libraries, uh, library, uh, I think, library. So we, we can always steal some code uh, from snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So also we don't have um, uh, we don't have any entry entry sub, uh, symbol not defined, right? So the reason why we don't have an entry symbol is because the entry symbol actually not main, right? So you 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 may say that we do have entry point which is main. In on Linux it is not actually main. It is actually underscore start. So that's what it is. So you don't actually have an entry point in here. You don't, um, right? And essentially what we can do. We have to say no entry point, right? So no entry. Uh, I think that's what it suggested us to do. Uh, right, so let, let me see. No entry to pass, no entry to uh, right. So I think we have to do that to the linker, right? So this flag is not part of the compiler, it's part of the linker. So that's why we have to do something like this. So this is how you say that you pass the flag to the linker, uh, right? So there we go. So now we have uh, a bunch of undefined symbols right now we have a bunch of undefined symbols but as far as i know you can also tell clanks uh, like uh, allow undefined symbols allow undefined symbols if i'm not mistaken and i think it's also part of the linker right and there we go we just compiled this entire example without any modifications without any modifications i repeat to wasm module that is 703 bytes <laughs> using the zosin way all right we can try to see uh like wasm to what all right so wasm to what what kind of stuff do we even have in there uh right so this is the actual wasm and what it says it expects these functions to be uh, you know, implemented for this module. The module wants to have these functions. And another thing it does, it also exports the main. It exports the main. Uh, so uh, it does a, a bunch of code in here, right? So it probably organized the loop in here. Loop, loop. 
so as you can see, it calls to set target FPS, then it calls to a window should close, and as you can see, it's inside of the loop and stuff like that. And here we have different things, right? So we have a memory, we have a stack pointer and stuff like that. So, uh, and yeah, there we go. We even have a string, hello from WebAssembly. So the only thing we need to do, we need to load this module into the browser. Right, so that's what we have to do. We have to load this module into the browser uh, and implement all of these functions, by the way. You know what's interesting is that I feel like because we are organizing the loop ourselves and on each iteration of the loop we call window should close, this is where we can do sort of like a continuation that calls to uh, request the next frame or something like that. That way, we may try, I do not promise that we will succeed, but we may try to make it so you don't even have to modify this thing. You don't even have to modify it. But I don't, no, not going to promise that. I'm not sure if it's going to work. But if we manage to do that, that would be fucking epic. <laughs> but I feel like it should be kind of possible. You know what I'm talking about? I feel like it should be kind of possible. It should be. We'll see, we'll see. Anyways, so let's create a game HTML. So yeah, unfortunately, you have to generate, like, uh, create your own HTML thing, yeah, right? So that's kind of inevitable, but I mean, it is what it is. So uh, let's do doc type uh, HTML, right? So do we have, uh, is, is this how we do doc type? It's kind of it's weird. So this is HTML uh, and uh, yeah, let me revert. Yeah, no, no, so it just didn't recognize the properly. So we're gonna have head. Uh, right, and ahead we're gonna have the title, which says uh, "Hello uh, Raylib," "Hello Raylib," and then we're gonna have a body, uh, and this is the body. And I suppose in here we need to have a canvas, right? So we need to have a canvas, and this is gonna be the canvas for the game, right? So that's the canvas, uh, and we're also gonna have a script, All right? So the script that does the loading and stuff like that. So I suppose we probably want to do something like SRC, um, Raylib.js, right? So that's probably what I want to have in here. So it's going to be Raylib.js, so you, you'll just use it like that. Uh, right. So let's try to maybe open this entire thing in a browser, though we, we probably have to uh, open it um, like through a server, right? Because it's a WebAssembly. WebAssembly requires a server. Uh, so I'm going to do the usual Python 3M HTTP server 6969. Boom. Uh, so we'll we already have that, right? Uh, I think I already have the server running. Uh, so yeah, here it is. Okay, so I could probably um, rename this entire thing. I'm going to say server, right? So this is the server. And we can go, okay, let's close all of that shit. It's not needed. Uh, let's open game HTML. There we go. And let's open DevTools. So in the DevTools, it couldn't load Raylib.js, which is understandable. I just want to take a look at all of these things. So here is the, it's inside. <laughs> Wait, did I, what the fuck did I do? Why, why is it like that? Uh, so game HTML. Uh, yeah, so maybe let's do canvas. That that was weird. Yeah, so canvas has to be a separate thing. Script is a separate thing, uh, and everyone is happy. So a canvas is actually rather small, like this. Uh, we probably need to center it. <laughs> we need to center the div. <laughs> God damn it. So this is the canvas. Um, Right, well, let's try to center it. Okay, so uh, we need to create uh, maybe game CSS. Right, so let's do game CSS. And how do you include CSS into HTML? Uh, so include CSS into HTML. So something like link. Uh, I, I kind of vaguely remember that it's uh, link uh, type style sheet or something like that, but I can never kind of remember that for some reason. Um, I can never remember that. So link rel style sheet href. Yeah, obviously, very intuitive, very easy to remember. Uh, style sheet, uh, style sheet and href, which is going to be a, a game CSS, right? So that's what we have in here. 
Uh, we don't even have to do anything in here. Okay, so we're gonna do that in in there. Uh huh. So and here's the game CSS and yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. So the first thing we need to do, we need to take the ID of the game. So we have ID as the game, right? First of all, position absolute. <laughs> Uh, okay, so <clears throat> so in position absolute, it makes it super easy to just do this kind of thing. So I think top fifty uh, percent, uh, right, and then left fifty percent, right. So that's how we do that, if I'm not mistaken, right. So, yo, yo, it we're already kind of done. You you cannot see that, but I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of done, right. So, yeah, it's it's there. So we just need to move it. I halfway to the to the you know left top. So I remember it's CSS uh, transform transition something right. So you can apply different sort of transformations to CSS. So CSS transitions, um, right? So yeah, you can do uh, not transition um, transform translate. Yeah, translate, mother of Libra, translate, translate, mother of Libra, translate, translate, mother of Libra, translate, you translate. Mm. So yeah, transform and you just do this kind of shit. So where can I copy paste it? Yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy. And essentially what we do is like minus 50% on both of them. So minus 50% on both of them. Uh, I centered the div. Dab, 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 dab. Am I hired as a web dev? Am I hired as a web dev? I used Google, so I probably know, but I centered the div. I know how to center the div, mother flippers. Oh. <sighs> you know CSS a little bit, a little bit. Hire the fire. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Position absolute, right? Position absolute. Anyway, so as far as I know, there is like a tons of different ways to center the element. It's just like it's probably the easiest one. Right? Um, it's probably the easiest one. So another interesting thing is that we probably want to like canvas to take the entirety of the of the window, right? But I mean, we can take it, make it uh, take the entirety of the height, right? So uh, height, hundred uh, percent, right? So at least this is how I do that in Snake, right? So there we go. So it kind of takes the entirety uh, of this thing, right? So yeah, so that's pretty cool. But it also centers it and everything. So I actually want to do something like this. So it's a little bit more obvious. Yeah, there we go. So that's the that's the canvas. And if you change the size, it fits. It basically fits the entire like height of the canvas. So it's pretty convenient. Yeah, I think it's I think it's fine. It's just like. You know, uh, five five lines of CSS. Can your C do that? I don't fucking think so. C developers are seething and coping right now. What the? F <laughs> the goddamn C developers don't know any shit about web development. <clears throat> Anyways. I think I'm going fucking crazy. So Raylib, uh, if we go to Raylib.js, uh, so we don't even have that, Raylib.js. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first thing we have to do, we have to fetch uh, game wasm. That's the first thing we have to do. And essentially we can even console log this big. Uh, though, can I just say um, document on load? Right, equal to eh. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, I'm sorry. Um, can I do shit like this? Or is it window unload? I don't remember. Who, who remembers? Is that a window or document? Who, who remembers this shit? It's a window. Okay, thank you so much. I, I'm not a web developer, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know how to do this kind of thing. So, um, okay. Module, uh, so wasm. So we're gonna await this thing and uh, let's just do console log uh, wasm, right? So uh, let me, let me see, let me see. Uh, boom, uh, did you load it? Did you fucking load it? I think it didn't load it. 
Mother Flipper. Big. Okay. Console log uh, on load. Disappointing. Yeah, it doesn't do shit. Right. Window add. Uh, maybe we can do that, but you should uh, should better use window add event listener. Okay, I mean, how did I do that in Snake? Let me let me remember. Uh, snake index HTML. It's actually wasm. Yeah, JS. Oh, I see. I didn't give a shit actually. That that might be actually even better. Yeah. So WebAssembly has instantiate streaming so you can just fetch this thing and instantly like instantiate and everything we can do a similar thing i think that's even better right and then and then in here <laughs> that is kind of dumb but yeah it's document chat G mods <clears throat> permaban fucking permaban okay it's a document <laughs> God damn web developers. Still doesn't work. Okay, whatever. I, I'm I'm done with this shit. Uh wait, did I actually maybe I forgot to include this entire thing. So yeah, I think it it, uh, it actually fetches everything correctly, right? So it does in fact fetch everything correctly. Uh assembly instan instantiate streaming and we can do fetch we can do this fetch thingy uh right like so and we have to also provide the implementations but who cares all right so then when we get the w thingy we're gonna do console log um so game instantiated game instantiated and we can provide the module that got instantiated right so uh, let's refresh this entire scheisse on code. WebAssembly module environment module is not an object or a function. Right. So as far as I know, you also have to provide something like env. Right. So this is where you're going to have all of the functions. Uh, yeah. Import env function init window function. It wants a function called init window. Right. So what we have to do, we have to do init window. We are already implementing Raylib chat. So here you can do width and height. Uh, and then title. So in here you can say, okay, console log uh, width uh, init window, right? Init window. Um, so maybe something like width height title. There we go. So that's basically what we have in here. So now we'll set target FPS. Let's implement set target FPS. Um, in fact, I remember in Snake, maybe not in, even in Snake, but uh, I had, uh huh, yeah. I in Olivets specifically in Olivets. I do remember that. Uh, I had a pretty cool thing that basically automatically implements all of the necessary functions, uh, all of them, right? And it is called make environment. So browser run. Oh yeah, this one. So essentially, it creates a proxy that provides you default implementation for literally all of these things and what it does it just says console error not implemented right uh, so now uh, i'm gonna take this entire thing and i'm gonna actually copy uh, this to really because i think it is useful so that will allow you to actually just do the following thing make environment and just wrap it like that and that's it right so essentially if one of the functions are not implemented they're going to have implementation that says not implemented and in fact because of that i can just like remove this entire thing uh completely so that's a very cool piece of code and as you can see it just compiled and loaded successfully uh, i think but it didn't say got in instantiated or anything like that which is kind of weird so i'm not quite sure so it loaded that is totally sus right so where's the console log yeah there's no console log huh. so it means it's broken Mod might be broken actually uh, hello um so yeah we probably need to do catch so what's the on error what's the on error thingy uh for for the promise who remembers that uh promise 
js promise on error. How will you do that? And then uh, it's it's catch, right? But I, I want a confirmation, right? Uh, chat likes to debate me, uh, but I need some sort of a confirmation. No, no, no. I, I don't rem like I don't trust you. Like I, I, I don't freaking trust you. No, I need a con confirmation. Uh, so it is catch. Okay. So now now I'm confident that it is like that. So it's a catch error. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be catch. And uh, this is going to be an Emacs, you dummy, dum dum. Uh, all right, um, and we can do console log error. Emacs, please stop. Like I beg you, D don't do this kind of shit anymore. <laughs> all right, so uh, Dev tool hide the console log. Ah, error only. Did I did I press error only? Where? How did I? I I, pro I must be accident. Okay, I accidentally pressed uh, this kind of thing. But anyway, all right. So we have a module and we have an instance. And here's the most important thing: um, Do we have any exported functions? Okay, so this is the functions that we are importing. This is the function that we want to have. But do we export any functions? We don't. And that's the problem, right? That's the problem. So uh, let me let me see. So the thing we have to do, uh, if we go to snake was a main, when we compile the entire thing, um, you have to export specific function, right? So export. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and export main. I think that's going to be interesting. Uh, let's literally export main and let's literally rebuild the entire thing. Uh, minus B. Okay, that's cool. Uh, right, I'm going to refresh and uh, we are online forwarding. Oh, service worker. <laughs> uh, I still have a service worker from that stream. It's <laughs> anyway. So experts memory. Uh, am I being dumb dumb? Probably. It's probably cached. Yeah, boy. <clears throat> Look at that. We got a main function. We got a main function. Now, you know what we do? We can do. Chat. You know what we can do. We can try to call that function from JavaScript. Who said we can't do that? Who fucking said we can't do that? We can't do that. Uh, right, so it's going to be, uh, I suppose, w experts, w experts main, I suppose, right? So we, we just call that, uh, right? And we're going to refresh this entire thing. Uh, can't read property main, god damn it. Okay, so uh, I think it's instance. Yeah, instance. Um, Fuck, I fucked up. I fucked up. Because it calls all of that shit in a loop. But it worked. Just a second, just a second. It worked. It worked. Uh, okay, so one of the things we can do, uh, so we can do window uh, should close, right? Window should close. Um, we can say uh, return false. Yeah, return true. So that will immediately make it close the window. Right. So that will immediately make it close the window. So let's try to open it. And man, it's probably going to be fucking cached. Right. It's probably going to be fucking cached. So it will load the previous version. Oh my God. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe load the Raylib right now. So maybe that will update the cache. So then later I can open. Okay. There we go. Look at that shit. It called init window and then set target FPS and then close window because sh uh, should close window returned false. Mm -mm. Um, I still didn't disable cache. I think I disabled the cache or did I? I don't remember. Oh, disable cache. Yeah. 
So I did that for, for the previous stream. Anyway, so yeah, look, all of that, chat, chat, let that sink in. Just let that sink in. I don't understand why people are not excited about this kind of shit as I am. All of that without using mscripton. I guess, uh, I think the culture in software development is so goddamn broken, nobody even understands, like, why the fuck am I excited about this kind of thing? Because in Scripton, just follow the instruction on Inscripton and it just works. What's the problem? <laughs> the, the simplicity of the whole thing, like, look at that. Like, this is a very small script. The was a module is so fucking small. Yeah, and also, so far, I didn't experience, like, severe problems, right? So all of the problems that I encounter are part of the implementation process. And it's just like, isn't simplicity, isn't it exciting when you do a simple thing and it just works? And it's just like, and you don't have to troubleshoot things, you don't have to Google things around, and it's just like, I think that's so fucking cool. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, it's just like, isn't it cool when you don't have problems? That's what I don't understand. <laughs> it's like, isn't it cool when you just don't have problems? When things just work? I think that's fucking cool. That's fucking exciting because it's so fucking rare in 2024. It's been rare in 2023. It's even rare in 2024. Uh, right. <clears throat> so... Uh, so the question is, how can we even organize the loop? Okay, so in case of init window, it is understandable. We can do some things. So we can, for instance, set, uh, you know, the size of the canvas to be that size and maybe the title of the window to be that. That is super easy to implement. Uh, what's the difficult part is how do you organize the loop? How do you organize the loop? Because the usual way you organize the loop, you organize the loop through requesting the uh, frame. You know what I mean? You organize it through request in the frame. And uh, so that's a very interesting situation. Uh, right, that's the very interesting situation. So ray lib uh, js. So js request next frame. Mm -mm. Uh, request next frame. Mm -hmm. Request next animation frame. So when you provide the callback, callback, as far as I know, accepts uh, some stuff. It accepts the timestamp. All right. So when you can use that to calculate delta step and everything. All right. So, okay. We successfully loaded the uh, WASM module. Right. So we successfully loaded it. So we do window. Uh, window request animation frame. Um, and um, what I like to do, actually, I like to have two separate functions. First one. Uh, right, so function first, which accepts the timestamp. Uh, and it kind of initializes the previous. All right, so previous is undefined for now. Uh, right, so this is going to be the first frame. And uh, previous timestamp, and we just schedule another animation frame. Right, so request animation frame uh, next. And the next already, uh, right, next, takes the current timestamp and computes the delta time, uh, computes the delta time based on the current time step and the previous one, and saves the current time step in previous one. So, and then it requests the next one, right? So essentially on the first frame, we don't really know delta time, it's probably gonna be zero. Uh, right, so, but the next one, uh, we have something new. And this is where you probably request the next frame. This is probably where you request the next frame. Mm. But um, the function itself wants to organize its own loop. What I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, chat, what if when you do window should close, when you do window should close, we request the next frame, uh, we request the next frame and block and block. And only then, when the next frame has been requested, we 
uh, resume the computation, we unblock window should close and allow this entire thing to continue until end drawing. Right, and then drawing does the rest of the thing. So we have a lot of points in here to organize something. Uh, right, we have a lot of points in here to organize something, and I wonder what kind of stuff we can do in here. Um, right. So initially, okay, so this is previous. So this is previous. Um, let's, in the window should close, request the next animation frame where we're going to take the timestamp. All right, so this is where we got the timestamp. And obviously, this thing is not going to block that easily, right? Mm -mm. It is not going to block that easily. Does the request animation frame return some sort of a promise? Does it return some sort of a promise that we can use? Um, or can you promisify this thing? Can you promisify? Let's Google it up. It's very interesting, actually. Um, so, JS request uh, request animation frame as promise. Mm -hmm. In inside the promise. Okay. So let me see. Maybe Google knows a little bit better. So, but I'm starting to feel that it might not be that easy how to use. Okay. So maybe this discussion is actually useful. Um, okay, okay, request animation. So, okay, there is a request ID, which is rather interesting. Uh, it does return request ID. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so, we have a lot of different points at which we can try to do something, right? So maybe we can try to do that at begin drawing. Uh, we can try to do that at begin drawing. Um, interestingly, what if we have two loops in parallel? Uh, what if we have two loops in parallel? So essentially, one loop keeps scheduling itself, right, and drawing things. And this one keeps issuing commands, right? It keeps issuing commands and adds them to some sort of a queue, to some sort of a queue that is then um, rendered by the rest of the things, right? But I feel like if you call main, right, if you call main, it is going to kind of block everything. I wonder if you can, yo, I have a really weird idea. What if we run the entire game, the entire game in a worker, in a worker, and every time you do begin draw, clear background or something like that, we issue a command and set it to the main thread that actually renders things. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> it feels a little bit complicated. Um, so, and I don't really know how to do that. Right. So it feels a little bit complicated and I don't know how to do that. Uh, so we're probably not going to do that. But the advantage of this approach, by the way, the advantage of that approach is that you, we may have the, literally the same code in web and in native, right? In web and in native. So, but anyway, uh, but anyway, so we can go with the same approach as Mscripten, right? So, an uh, interesting is that Mscripten doesn't even solve the problem that we're trying to solve, right? Even with Mscripten, with all of its cost of added complexity, you still need to do that trick of set frame handler. You, you still need to do that. It's still a thing that you must do, right? Set frame handler or something like that. Or we can go even further. In fact, we can go even further. We can actually export that function. So we can say next frame, right? So this is the next frame. 
and uh, in here in here when we do the next frame we just do it like that uh, we just do it like that we just do it like that and um, to be fair so we do next window and the close one uh, <clears throat> So I suppose we still need to have this kind of thing, right? So if uh, defined platform web, we're going to have our own entry point, right? So something like, let's do ray lib frame, then uh, ray lib init, ray lib init, um, you know, Raylib is actually kind of related to the to the library. Let's call it game frame, uh, game init, uh, right? And in in init you would do all of these things, right? In init you would do all of these things. Maybe we can even do it like that: game init, right? Game frame, uh, game frame, uh, and uh, game. Actually, wait a second. We can, yeah. That's very interesting, actually. Game. How how can we call that game? Uh, so close, right? Game close, uh, and game close. Hmm. And if. Hmm. So, essentially, we're just exporting all of these things. Game over, okay? Chat suggests game over. Um, right. So these are callbacks that are called uh, by the runtime, by, by the JavaScript runtime. So that's the callbacks. Um, okay. So interestingly, if I try to do make game native, right? So I think game native it, it, it's compilable right so if you take a look at the game native uh, right so it's a native game uh, here is the native game here's the native game uh, and when we're compiling the wasm one we probably have to also specify platform web right so we're doing platform web and when we're exporting we're not exporting main anymore right so we don't care about main we do game um you know in it right so and we need to export all of these functions in here uh, game frame, uh, frame, game over, game over. There we go. So, and I can rebuild everything, right? And it also rebuild the wasm. So, if we take a look at the uh, wasm to what? Wasm to what? Uh, so, what we are exporting, we're exporting things like game init. So, here is the game init. So, the game over, right? And it should be also game frame somewhere. Uh, where's the game frame and here is the game frame so now right if we want to run this entire thing we should not run game main right the first thing we have to run uh, is game init so that's the first thing we do uh, then we do request animation frame and stuff like that and we do uh, instance uh, instance uh, exports so, game frame game frame and uh, what's interesting is that we never call game over because we don't really catch that yet but maybe we will in the future maybe we will in the future it doesn't really matter that much anyways so what do we want to do we want to implement all of the functions in here right we want to implement all of the functions so we can say that uh window should never close right so it's always going to be false uh, when we do init window, right, when we do init window, what do we do, chat? Here we have width and height. So here we have width and height. I suppose what we have to do, we have to take the canvas, we have to ca take the canvas and uh, set its width and height to that, right? So that's what we have to do. Uh, so by the way, uh, let me actually put true in here, uh, just in case it go into the loop. So... Um, 
first of all, we need to get the canvas. So this is going to be canvas. Uh, it's undefined for now. Once the entire thing initialized, right? Once the entire thing initialized, we need to do canvas um, document get element element by ID, and the ID is game HTML, game HTML, and it's game. It's literally game. So that's what we have in here. And we also need to have a context. So it's a canvas uh, get. How do you do that? HTML5 canvas example. Show me, please. Mm. All right. So let me see. Let me see. Uh -huh. Get context. Okay. Get context, and the context is going to be two D. So that actually makes it impossible to to use three D capabilities of Raylip. But you can actually use WebGL in the future and implement them. You can actually then implement them. So. It's not that big of a deal in my opinion. It's not that big of a deal. So you have a context and I suppose we can put the context here as well. In fact, uh, I would actually only keep the context because you can get the canvas from the context. Uh, right, so I can do something like this and the only thing we need in here is the context. So CTX uh, canvas, uh, canvas width equal to width and then height equal to height. Uh, and uh, JS set title uh, uh, of right, just set title. So let's see. How did I make a change the web page title? Okay. Mm, document title. Okay. Uh, this is a problem, by the way. This is a problem. You know why? Because title is a pointer. It is literally a pointer. You need to extract that from the memory. You need to extract that from the memory. So that means uh, we have to... Yeah, there we go. I already have that, actually. <laughs> uh, okay, so in a snake, I implemented things like string lang, sister to pointer, and stuff like that to manipulate the memory and everything. Right, so you can extract C strings from the memory. So I already have that. So this is going to be actually very useful. Um, all right, so let me actually put that in here. <laughs> sister Len. Uh, and the way you work that, you, you get, uh, okay, sister by pointer. Oh, it automatically decodes the shit. Okay, so we definitely need that. So the way you use that, you just give it the memory buffer. Yeah, that's how you use the shit. Uh, so essentially, you extract the memory buffer out of the wasm, wasm module, so which means that we need to have a wasm module available in there, right? So let me let me see. Maybe I can do something like wasm undefined, uh, and then it means in here I can do wasm w. So then we can actually have an access to all of that. So we take wasm instance expert, we take the memory, we take the buffer, and we take the title by uh, by that thing. So this is the text. And we can right away assign document title like that, right? So the main problem with like WebAssembly is that you can't really work with, uh, right? You can't really work with strings directly. You kind of need to extract them from the memory, right? So you kind of need to extract them from the memory. Um, so let me let me see. So I just want to test how it is going to work. I have a lot of shit open, so let's actually close all of that stuff. Let's actually close all of that stuff and I'm about to refresh this entire thing. Text pointer is not defined. Okay, so where did that happen? Uh, 65. Uh, are you fucking serious? Uh, oh, well, I mean, that that's that makes sense. Text, uh, PTR. Oh, yeah. So it's a title. So this is a title. We might as well maybe call it title PTR just for the convenience. Uh, all right. So what do we have in here? Um, so that kind of why do you keep working okay uh let's kill this shit window should close where is the window should close i said true ah so yeah we we never close this thing anymore yeah so we never we never call this thing anymore so that's totally fine all right all right that, that makes sense so i suppose what we want to do we want to actually just like do something like this all right. So game init and maybe game over. Just call these two things. Uh, right. And I'm just in case I'm gonna rebuild everything. 
uh, localhost 6969. Uh, so 6969. Um, yeah, there we go. So you, you can set, haha. <laughs> so did it work? I think it worked. Yeah. The width and height is set. The width and height is set. Uh, so the um, game HTML. So this was hello Raylib, by the way. The title was hello Raylib, but now it is hello from WebAssembly. And if we take a look at the game.c. So yeah, we implemented init window. We implemented init window. So just saying, just saying. Um, okay. So the next thing we need to do. So what's going to be the next thing? Um, game dot c. Uh, set target fps. Uh, I I think we can just ignore it, All right? So I think we can just ignore it. So we can say something like set target fps. Um, so fps uh, constant log. Um, the game wants to run at, uh, let's put it like this maybe. Is this how we do that? FPS at FPS, but uh, in web, uh, we gonna just ignore it. <laughs> right, so let me see. Let me see if it's going to do. Uh, an expected identifier uh-huh. So, uh, is this how we do that? Set target FPS. Wait, what? Um, ah, Jesus. So dumb. <laughs> yeah, the game wants to run at... Yeah. Uh, at 60 FPS, but in web, we're going to just ignore it. Okay, so then it tries to close the window, so that's fine. Um, all right, so now let's do the rest of the things. Let's do the rest of the things. So we're not going to request the next frame. We're going to only do one frame. Uh, yeah, begin drawing. So when we begin drawing, uh, I don't think we can do anything. At least right now, we don't really need to do anything. Um, so and when we end drawing, we're also not going to do anything. End drawing. We also don't do anything. Uh, right, so they are implemented, so of course, comma, okay. So clear background, the only thing we need in here is a clear background, uh, clear background. Uh, and that's the interesting part. That's now the interesting part, actually, because uh, we need to set the current color. So it's going to be CTX, fill, um, fill style, I suppose, but uh, we need to use the browser styles. And I think we in Snake already have that. So, yeah, color hex. Yeah, I already have a code that extracts the components out of the integer and turns them into the uh, browser hex code. So you can use that in a freaking browser. So, uh, anyway, web, am I right? Web. So, already have that. So, that means color hex, and this is the... Uh, this is the color, right? I just put it in here. Um, so clear, I think it's just a clear rect. Or maybe we can say fill rect. Um, HTML5 canvas uh, clear with color. I don't remember how we do that. Uh, this shit is kind of complicated, but it looks amazing. And then those people have no problems with them scripten? Have you seen them scripten? Have you seen them scripten? Okay, so you're probably trolling me. Okay, I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so, uh, field style. So you, you probably have to do the, the whole thing in here. Okay, so that's understandable. So field style, field erect, we can do zero, zero, ctx, canvas. Uh, and we just do width, uh, width ctx um, canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, do, 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 do. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so that's kind of cool. 
but it didn't do shit because I think uh, what we have to do yeah so clear clear rect and then I suppose we have to do the fill right so we have to do the fill uh, ctx fill um, it didn't work um, but why why it didn't work we can try to do console log um, so is it just wrecked maybe it just has to be wrecked maybe that thing was right no it wasn't and there's no also errors uh, ctx canvas is wrong really no it is not uh, so it is not wrong mm -hmm. so maybe i can find something in snake uh fill rect so fill style fill rect uh-huh so th that's understandable that's basically what we're doing here and then where do we call this entire thing well yeah that's that's basically it isn't it that's basically it um so game init request animation in the loop uh-huh game render so we just render the game uh -huh. so yeah i didn't see any problem frame fill rect so fill style fill rect yeah that should be mm -hmm. So uh, this is a fill rect. Um. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? So I initialize this thing correctly. It's something super dumb. What's funny is that every time I'm working with the HTML canvas, I cannot get it to render anything first try and i spent some time just figuring out what is wrong and i keep forgetting what exactly did i do <laughs> that's the most annoying part of this canvas shit it's just like it never really works for me first try i just have to mess with it a little bit and then i don't remember what exactly did i do it's just like it wants something fucking specific it it wants something specific and i cannot figure out for 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 my life what exactly does it want uh, so the, the loop is disabled, but we are rendering at least one frame, right? So I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean, but we are rendering at least one frame. So it should not be a thing. It should be, should not be a problem. Um, so it's just so fucking annoying. It's just like, what, what do you have to do in here? Uh, okay. So yeah, it doesn't, doesn't do anything. So CTX fill wrecked. Uh, show me example, right? So HTML5 uh, canvas um, rectangle. Right, I want to see that. Uh, I want to see that. J just an example, just a full example that works. Begin path. Also, th th is it uh, feel rectangle? Please, no, no, no. Feel, feel. Um, so HTML5 canvas feel rect example. Right, full example, all of this stroke bullshit, finish stroke bullshit, like everything. What exactly do you have to perform from to make it work? Full example, please. Full example. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So feel style. All right. So maybe this is something with the caller. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, right. So let's put red in here. And then we feel red. I, I can even hard code all of these things so I know uh what exactly going on right so we get element by id right so here's the element by id being gotten <laughs> right so and this is id game then i do canvas get context we get the context okay we assign it we initialize everything uh we call the next frame everything's fine everything's fine so then we do fill style and it should just work uh right i rebuild for some reason but i don't think it is necessary uh it works okay so that is pretty cool that is pretty epic what about ctx canvas width uh right ctx uh, canvas height 
uh, right, CTX canvas height. If I refresh it now, uh, right, it seems to be working. So maybe there's something with the color. Maybe I'm using just a bad color. Yeah, I'm, I was just using bad color. That's fine. So let's take a look at what is this freaking color. Uh, fill style. Fill style and uh, right. So let me see. So that's a weird color, not gonna lie, but another weird thing in here is the alpha, right? Why did it choose such an alpha? Um, so this is because we actually take the alpha into account. We actually take the alpha into account and the alpha in here is like that. So maybe there is something, so if it's red, what if I, okay, it could be this, not really. Okay, it was not really that. Why is this such a... Okay, so there's something with color conversion. At least we know that, which is already good. Uh, so, also, um, const hex. Right, so color hex. Um, and we can do hex const log hex. All right. Uh huh. That is bizarre. So, uh, Raylib, where are you, Raylib, mother flipper? Um, now, if I take a look at the Raylib in here, so color, uh, specifically red, uh, define red. Uh, okay. Mm. So does this thing fit? How do you pass structures in? Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at maybe the way we pass structures. Maybe it passes the structures through the pointer. In that case, it's kind of sus, right? In that case, it's kind of sus, and I don't really know how exactly we're going to do all that, but uh, we can try to do that nonetheless. Um, so let me take a look. Wasn't to what? Wasn't to what? Uh, clear color, cl clear background. How do you call this thing? Uh, local set. Uh -huh. Local get nine. It doesn't really explain me much. Doesn't really explain me much. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. If I do. Uh, where is the JavaScript? Okay, so here is the JavaScript. Uh, I'm going to just remove implementation. I'm going to just remove implementation. And I want to see what arguments do we get from this function at all. Uh, so something with token. Uh, JavaScript, where is the JavaScript? Uh-huh. Commented out too much, I guess. Yeah. Uh-huh. So this is what we got. This is the thing. This is the thing. Uh, and if I do hex, it doesn't look like a hex. So that's kind of the problem. Uh, so I suppose this is a pointer in the memory. It must be a pointer in the memory. So, okay, let's do the following trick. So let's just assume that it's a pointer in the memory. Uh, so I suppose the call convention is that the structures are um, in the memory. So we take the buffer, right, we take the buffer, and uh, inside of the buffer, we can try to locate something. So the way we work, we just take this memory, right, we take this memory, um, uh, so we also need to turn it into like a view of that thing. Yeah, so essentially, uh, we take the buffer, uh, like buffer of the memory, and we take a view of that buffer in here, right? We take a view on it. So we can just use the caller PTR and we can take four of these bytes, uh, right? And then we can try to maybe print this entire thing to see if it contains what I expect it will contain. So clear background and expected identifier. Um, mm, so it's just buffer. Uh, 55, comma. Okay. 
Okay. Does it look familiar? Does it look familiar? Um, two three zero forty one fifty five two hundred fifty five. Two hundred thirty forty one fifty five two hundred fifty five. So it was in the memory. So it's literally located in the memory, right? Okay. So uh, I guess we can work with that. I guess we can work with that. Uh, so the only thing in here is that we'll need to we'll probably need to have this as a separate function all right function um how to say that color hex um unpacked all right and then here we're gonna just accept rgba uh, and we can just try to do the following thing um, right, we're gonna reassign RGBA like so. Uh, so it's gonna be RGBA. So we reassign them and we just return them like that. So then we can do color hex and packed. Um, so can I, by the way, do shit like this? Is that something I can do in JavaScript? Right, so then I can do uh, color. Uh, hex unpacked RGBA uh, RGBA and let me let me see yeah boy 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 okay good so now uh, we're gonna do something like this Brav, 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 brav. Okay, boom. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Extracted mother flipping color from the memory. From the memory. Absolutely freaking epic. So, okay, that's pretty cool, you know. But this is kind of boring, right? So what's so special about this piece of shai sung? What is so special about this piece of shai sung? Let's actually implement something more substantial, right? Let's implement something more substantial. Uh, you know, the, the classical, uh, you know, moving, bouncing off of the edges, triangle, rectangle, whatever. Maybe even circle, right? So let's actually do circle because it's easier because I can work with... Um, I don't have to think too much about edges i suppose but maybe it doesn't really matter okay so we're going to introduce position so vector to position uh position and position is going to be let's say at the center though one of the things uh, one of the cool things we, we can do we can um essentially when we initialize this entire thing we can get uh so screen uh screen width we can get screen width uh, which is going to be an integer, right? So it's going to be x, uh, w, and h. So we also will have to implement this entire thing, right? And then we can initialize position uh, half of that, uh, and y is going to be half of that. So that means we'll need to implement this thing. So we kind of initialize this entire thing, right? And then uh, we can do, um, you know, ball radius. So this one could be ball position. So, and this is also ball position um so then we can have ball velocity right ball velocity um which is going to be let's say uh 100 and 100 right so 100 and 100 afterwards afterwards after we initialized everything and stuff like that we can do uh, get frame time then vector to scale we're scaling the velocity of this entire thing uh we're scaling the velocity and then we do vector to add to the ball position and we just reassign all of that to the ball position so we got this thing uh right so that's pretty cool so that will probably mean that we need uh, to have ray math which is fine we can have that uh so and afterwards we need to draw the circle right so how can we draw the circle draw circle uh, maybe V. Do you have draw circle V? Uh, draw circle V. Right, so we have to provide the center, which probably means that um, 
yeah, you will have to read it from memory, but we already know how to read structures from memory, so it doesn't really matter. Um, okay. Oh, this one is going to be kind of kind of sucky wacky, but that's fine. So this is the ball position, uh, ball position. Then the radius, uh, ball radius, uh, radius, uh, which is going to be like say one hundred, and the color is going to be also red. Um, in terms of the clear background, I think we should just do something like get color. Uh, maybe maybe I want to do something like this. Um, so FF 80, 80, 80, because it's easier. <clears throat> it's just easier. Though, yeah, this one is not going to work, right? So th this one is definitely not going to work. So it's better to um, maybe do something like this. All right, so 20, 20, 20, 255, right? So maybe that will work. Maybe we can also make it clitoral. Um, okay, so we draw on the ball, and that's it, basically, right? So that's basically it. Um, mm, so let's try to compile the native game, game native, and see if it's going to work. Okay, it compiles first try. <laughs> that is sus. Uh, all right, so, oh, okay. Yeah, that seems to be working. So that's cool. So it, this is the native one, right? So this was, this was the native one. Uh, now let's try to compile the uh, web one. Web one doesn't, it wants to have math. Okay, so that one kind of sucks, not gonna lie. It kind of sucks, not gonna lie. So we also need to have math. Can we? Can we just not? Um, yeah. Okay, so it complains about undeclared shit. Right, it complains about undeclared shit. We can declare it ourselves. Okay, sure. So float, florf, float. Uh, right. So what else do we have? Fubs. Anything else? What else do we want? Fmax. Uh, Fmax. Uh, and. Incompatible declaration, uh, float. What else? Security, security F. If we don't use any of them, it doesn't really matter, actually. Right, so it just needs the declarations. Uh, A10, A10 to F. Uh -huh. So it's two floats. And the last one, consf. And I suppose, uh, cosf. If, huh? Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, F minf, okay. Fabs, oh, it's, it's without F. It is also uh, A, right? So, w wait, what? Incompatible declaration. Uh, well, that is bizarre. Oh, because it's supposed to accept and return double, I see. Uh, oh my god, that's a lot of them. So, and so we only have like 10. Um, it's not really, really that many of them, honestly. So, I'm pretty sure I can just do that manually. A cos F, so I can do that. <sighs> Finally, okay. So we went through all of them. So these are the mathematical functions that the code wants, but it's not going to be used everywhere. We can even take a look at uh, wasn't to what, wasn't to what, and what do you want? Yeah, it doesn't even want any of them because we don't use any of them. So yeah, that, that's kind of the point, right? So it factored them out anyway. So, because we don't call to them. <laughs> it's kind of, all of that was needed to just kind of, like, satisfy the compiler, but it was just the easiest way to do that, honestly. That was just the easiest way to do that. Um, so. Uh, okay, good. So that's fine. And then, this kind of stuff can be solved in the array lib header, by the way. In array math somewhere. We can do the check if we are in a platform web. Uh, just, you know, do that differently, right? Just just do that differently. Uh, all right. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, by the way, already. Um, so, 
let's try to run this entire thing. Uh, Localhost 69. Uh, I'm going to open the thing. And all right, so it keeps calling to all of this function. Okay, that's actually very cool. So we need to get screen width and get screen height. Uh, also, vector to scale, vector to add. It's kind of funny that it didn't really inline them. Uh, so maybe this is something that we should do. Right, because we can try to enable some optimizations, like O3, and recompile this entire stuff. Because if you take a look at the uh, array math, uh, array math dot h uh, vector to add. Right, so they are inlineable. So and this thing is inlineable. So it should do that, in my opinion. Uh, look, it also changed the background. It also changed the background. Uh, okay, look at that. It doesn't call to that function anymore. So <laughs> you don't want to implement a function, just enable all of the optimizations. It doesn't call to that function anymore. <laughs> Look at that, it doesn't call to vector to add because it was inlineable, so it just inlined it. Optimize the way, optimize the way. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to implement uh, arraylib.js uh, get screen, uh, screen width. Uh, it's actually super easy. We just return whatever we set in here. We, we literally just return whatever we set in here, so that should be fine. Uh, get screen width. Uh, and we can just do return ctx canvas width. Uh, I wonder if you, can, you don't have to do even return. I'm pretty sure you don't even have to do return. So this is going to be height and uh, this is going to be that. All right. So uh, let me see. Okay. Get frame time is also really interesting, actually. Uh, get frame time. So we kind of need to keep track of that, <clears throat> actually dt undefined so essentially we're gonna do it like that right we keep track of it and then we just let this thing return that so we return literally dt uh right so we implemented all of these things the only thing that is needed to be implemented in here is draw circle and this one is interesting because we have to read these structures from the pointers uh right so but we already know how to do that so it should be fine uh, draw uh, circle v circle v right so essentially i believe that a web version of raylib should be implemented in javascript right just take all of the functions in raylib and implement them in javascript and that will work that will i think for the most part like so far i don't really see any major roadblocks that will prevent you from doing that maybe uh, compatibility with m scripting will suffer and judging the current modern uh, software development culture that could be actually major roadblock or whatever but anyway because the developers are so fucking lazy <clears throat> so uh, array lib uh, draw circle uh, so where's the array lib uh, draw circle v so this is a center radius and color okay uh, Raylib uh, center radius color so it's actually something like that okay so these are the pointers and we need to do the memory trick all right so this is going to be the memory trick um this one is rather interesting i think because we can do do we have like floats new float 32 array buffer center is that a thing is that a thing uh so we can try to do okay so so this is the point obviously uh right center pointer uh caller a uh, console uh log center center and uh in terms of the caller all right so we can also have this thing uh and we can I suppose extract this thing out uh, afterwards. Console uh, const caller like this. So we have center and we have um, caller. There we go. So um, yeah, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. 
Okay, so... Oh yeah. I think this has to be actually two. Alright, this is too much. This is not correct, actually. I didn't think it is correct. This is not a float. Um, what is it then? Center PTR. Let's take a look at it from the point of view of uint. And let's take like 10 bytes out of that. Uh, Alright, so we can clearly see... Right, if we extend that to like a little bit more... Right, we can clearly see like a pair uh, of four bytes. Sometimes it's actually kind of different. So it's not... It's not consistent, if you look at it. It's actually not consistent. Mm -mm. It's actually not consistent, so it's really weird. <clears throat> so what's up with that? It is not in the memory. Could be, could be storing a pointer. Maybe let's take a look at the definition of vector two. Um, so it's two floats, right? So uh, it's two floats. So and I suppose it should be actually consistent, right? So I don't understand why it would not be. Mm. Float 32. Yeah. They're actually pretty big, but not that much big. No? Not, not, not that much big. So, what if we let this thing to simulate for a little bit? Um, okay. Uh, so, what if we let this thing to simulate a little bit? So, let C equals 0. Uh, and uh, if c is less than 10, we're going to do that, uh, c plus plus 1. Okay, so we're going to simulate uh, a bunch of frames. Uh -huh. And each frame, this thing is completely different, so it's definitely not that. It is definitely not that, which is hella bizarre. So how does it pass floats then? Like, I'm actually confused. Like, how do you pass them then? Um, does it also change them every time? Uh, no, the pointer is kind of the same. Right, the pointer is kind of the same. Though, uh, l let's take a look at the color. Uh, where is the color? The color is the same. The color is red correctly. Color is the same, and it seems to be the color of this thing. It's only this stuff that is really weird and i don't know is that because of the optimizations okay so we can just disable optimizations because maybe optimizations break this entire shit. uh maybe that's what's going on so let's disable optimizations but in that case we need to implement vector to uh, add and vector to scale and stuff like that right which means that maybe i can do that uh, manually right so let me go to the game and shit like that uh right so I'm not going to call to any of those things. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do ball uh, position x uh, plus ball velocity x multiplied by uh, get time. So this one is float dt, like so, delta time. And it's going to be y, y. Right, and let's try to recompile this entire thing. Uh, all right, and I'm going to refresh this entire thing. And it's still the same. So it was not because of the optimization. It was not because of the optimization. Uh, I just don't know how to read this entire thing then. Um, so uh, Clang wasn't passing structures. Is there any... Is PTR multiplied by 4 in float array? But uh, we're getting the point to the beginning. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we can try to maybe multiply it by 4. But So float 32 array. Uh, please don't tell me that the size is in bytes. I don't believe that. 
I don't believe that it's that dumb. What's length? Definition of length, please. Definition of length. Bytes per element. Please, really? Uh, wait a second. I really, like, I mean, so if it's, that must be eight in that case, right? So it must be eight if, if it's true, if it's, if it's bytes. Yeah, yeah, so it just returned me eight bytes, so it's, it's not true. Uh, it's actually not true. Mm. Is that different endianess? Is that different endianess, though? Um... Float 64. I don't think it is gonna matter. Is there even such thing as float 64? I don't think so. Nah, it's not that. U in 32. Um so we are interpreting it. It could be Andiana's problem. Like honestly. Um, I don't know how to read that. <laughs> don't know why I pretend like I do. Um, so does it accept, accept endianess? I didn't... Byte of set. So buffer byte of set and length. All right. So Clang wasm passing... Um, okay. Expert structure from C to wasm. Yeah. Oh my god, so much text. Um, the, the problem is that I'm stuck and I don't understand, like, like what else can you do in here? Like, huh? So th that's it. Like th that's the end of the story. Like <laughs> that's the end of the fucking story, right? This is just like, eh. So, <laughs> um, okay. So what else can you do in here? Uh, you in thirty two. Um, so it's such a dumb problem as well, right? It's like it's, it works perfectly in some other places as well right so it usually works perfectly it's something okay let's try to just do a different function like it's, it's not like it's like what else can you even do right so you get a pointer uh you get floats 32 you just read them if the end is incorrect that should be the end of the story that must be the end of the story i don't know why i'm even wasting time on that it's just like what kind of quirk or trick can you even expect in this situation? It's either some sort of weird quirk or trick, or I just doing that incorrectly. Right, it's just like, what else can it be in here? Like, how else would you even do that? Come on! It's like, <laughs> so dumb, like, I swear to God. Anyway, so, um, draw a circle then. Let's, let's give it a draw circle a try. Um, okay, so I don't don't see any other way to to solve that, I suppose, uh, except using that. Uh, so I suppose some sort of a research is required in here, right? So ball position x, uh, ball uh, position uh, y. The radius is going to be ball radius, and this one is going to be red. So in all of these cases, it's a little bit easier, I think, uh, right? So because the only pointer we're going to have in there is the color. Um, right. So what else do we have? So I didn't recompile. Uh -huh. So let's recompile. And uh, okay. So ha. Huh. 
Okay, that is sus. Okay, so maybe the problem is not what I thought. All right, because what we're doing here is that... Aha, uh -huh, so maybe it's it's something else. Right, when we do get width, we return... I have a feeling, just a second, that when I do get width, I actually return something bogus. That's what's probably going on. Uh, CTX canvas width. Uh, let me see. Uh, what do you want from me? It's not really that bogus, honestly. It's not really that. Um, so what about delta time? The delta time should be fine as well. Uh, right, so we return the... Is that because I... Wait a second. Do I always have to do return in here? No, it's not necessarily. No. So delta time returns... <gasps> Fucking JavaScript. Freaking... Oh my god. Oh my god. Ooh, all right, all right, calm down, Zosin, calm down. This freaking JavaScript always needs to find a way to fuck you up. Mm. Freaking web, like, why do they always fucking do that? It's like... <sighs> they just can't solve a problem. These motherfuckers need to introduce some gotchas to... Fuck you up every single fucking time. They, they can't just do that. They can't just, just design a normal fucking language, a normal fucking API. They just can't do that. They're incapable of doing that. Okay. Sorry. You copy pasted your function and now your code is garbage. Again! Put that in the frame. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God, I love it so much. It's such a cool phrase. You copy pasted a function without understanding what it does, and now your code is garbage. Again! Because you copy pasted it. <laughs> so fucking good. God bless Linus. Pl Linus, please. Please. Don't take your pills. Ignore your therapist. Please don't change. Please be yourself, Linus. The world needs you. The world needs you to be yourself. Don't fucking listen to those people. Don't fucking listen to stakeholders. Be yourself. Please. I beg you, Linus. Please. The world needs you. Anyway, so... um. <clears throat> So this is supposed to be, so this is flaws, right? So, um, you know, uh, get frame time. Yeah, it, it is floats and uh, should be fine then, right? Should be fine. So that's probably the reason. And in that case, uh, we don't really even need to implement anything else, right? So, okay, uh, all right. So this is a just draw a circle. Um, let me go back to the draw circle V. Draw circle V. Uh huh. Well, this thing keeps changing, right? Which is understandable. Um, so Raylib J S J S. Right. Like, and I spent the time. I should have not. Finally, oh my god. So, here's an interesting thing, chat. Here's an interesting thing. Anybody who ever done any computer graphics in their entire life, even a little bit, knows that you operate with delta time in seconds and floats. Like, 
If you worked just a little bit and you know how animations are done and how they're scaled with time resolution and stuff like that, you know time must be in seconds stored as a float. And all of the graphics library, all of the graphics API that allow you to do things like for engines and game development, they do that. Not the fucking web! Not the fucking web! Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry. Everything's fine. We figured it out. We figured it out. Um, so now, what we can have, we can actually have X and Y, right? So we can basically destructure this thing and, um, you know, uh, render this entire thing. So how do you fill these circles, by the way? This is um, a completely separate thing. Canvas, HTML5, uh, fill circle. I think you do that through arc, uh, right? So the, you do that through arc. Uh, they have excuses for this for sure. Of course, I, I know. Right, so every stupid fucking decision has an excuse. Everybody knows that. Uh, all right, so is that a full one or is that... Um, so it's two pi, so it must be full. All right, so you have to begin path and... Yeah, yeah, so that should be fine for us. So draw a circle, uh, begin path, center. Uh, so it's an X, Y. The radius, do we have the radius? Yeah, we do have the radius, so I can keep it like that. Zero, two pi, uh, false, I have no idea what the fuck is that, so I don't care. Uh, the color is this, then we fill this thing, and that's it. That should be it, minor Freunde. That should be it, minor Freunde. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Damn. Okay, so this has to be color. Uh, all right. Context is not found, of course. CTX. So yeah. So this is so this file, 112 lines of code, 112 lines of code, is an implementation of a subset of Raylib enough to um, actually make this native example work. So we can actually try to finish this thing. We can actually try to finish this thing. Uh, we're going to go to game C. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it bounce off of the edges, right? So the, the usual thing that I like to do. Uh, right, so we're going to have something like float x in here. So this is the new x. Uh, and if x plus uh, ball radius, actually uh, radius minus ball radius is less than zero or x uh, plus ball radius is greater or equal to get uh, screen width. Right, so we're actually switching up the velocity, right? So we're actually switching up. Uh, the velocity, we're multiplying it by that. Uh, otherwise, we are reassigning ball position x to x. Right, and we're repeating all of that to y as well, which will effectively make it bounce off of the edges. So this is going to be y, uh, y. This is going to be the height, uh, the height, y, y, y. So in the float, well, we probably also have to repeat that for y. So the usual thing, nothing special. I already implemented that multiple times. You're not seeing anything particularly new. So we could also maybe make it a little bit faster. Uh, right, we can make it a little bit faster. So maybe 200 uh, things in here. So we're going to recompile this entire thing. And uh, let's go to here. Uh -huh. So let's actually open this thing. Uh, yep, so this is in web. Uh, I pressed, okay. <sighs> like, it, it lags so much, I, I don't understand what the fuck is going on. But anyway, so this is the demo, right? But it also works on both of the platforms, right? So I'm literally rebuilding both of them. It, it's kind of weird. Uh, I think I should modify my make file. So all game wasm game native 
Alright, so I'm rebuilding all of them. And I can run game native. There we go. So. This is universal code. Right. The same file. Again, same file is compilable for web and for native. And I'm not using Raylib native. What I did, I just took the API of Raylib, subset of the uh, API of Raylib, and I implemented enough to make it work. I'm not using mscripten at all. And it's way simpler setup. Right, it's a way simpler setup. Right, so the only kind of difficult thing in here is this command line. But I'm pretty sure you can make some sort of a wrapper that is shipped with Raylib that just basically does this kind of stuff for you. Uh, right, so you can make it a little bit easier to set up. But the fact that this entire thing doesn't have that many moving parts, that's what's cool about it. Um, that's what's cool about this kind of stuff. Like, it uh, doesn't have that many moving parts. And in fact, the entirety of the game is 100, uh, like 1.7 kilobytes. And the runtime of Raylib is actually in JavaScript. Right. So, yeah, that is actually very cool. I think that is insanely cool. So we can go further and add more interesting things. For example, we can add gravity, right? So define gravity, um, right? So let's make it like 1000 or something like that. Uh, and so before we modify, right? So we're gonna do ball uh, velocity, y, um, we're gonna add gravity multiplied by delta time right so we're gonna just do that that automatically adds the gravity uh right so we need to recompile both of these things right we're recompiling i'm gonna refresh this entire thing and now we have gravity so yeah so it doesn't lose any energy so it's gonna go like that forever um uh, so yeah so this is obviously not the full implementation of Raylib. Obviously, you cannot take any Raylib example and run it like that. But I think it's a pretty cool proof of concept of how Raylib, in my opinion, should have worked. Right. It's Again, it's my opinion. I know that the opinion uh, of today's software developers is that uh, the complexity of the setup doesn't matter, right? So you can pile uh, like a lot of crap on top as much as possible. But if Rayleap followed the spirit of simplicity that it does in pure C, I think it should be implemented like that, right? Because this approach follows the spirit of Rayleap. Isn't that the spirit of Rayleap? I think this is the spirit of Rayleap. Uh, can you now respect the FPS settings? I don't know. I probably don't. But can M scripten? So it's the question of can you set up FPS um, in web? It can't. Okay. So uh, really good work. I think Raysan is definitely going to check that. I think. It would be actually kind of cool to make some sort of like a proper official proposal to Ray San. Uh, so it, it would be kind of rude to just, you know, give him link to this uh, stream because, I mean, it's a long stream. He probably not going to watch that. It would be kind of cool to make like a proper demo, proper demo with like explanations and justifications and stuff like that. And also short video that, like of me explaining this approach and philosophy of this approach and uh, suggest to maybe you know, start working on that. But uh, another question is that who's going to implement that? Right. I obviously technically can spend time implementing all of that and bring a Raylib uh, and bring a Raylib to that level. But first of all, I'm not for paid for that. <laughs> or I could do that as a content, but it's a very long project and uh, if I will just keep working on that, I'm going to start losing views. Like, it's very difficult for me to work on long projects without losing views. So, like, it's it's a matter of resources, right? Uh, technically, I know I have technical abilities to do that. I know how to do that. I just don't have resources. Like, I literally don't have resources to do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. 
try to talk with Rayson. I think he's a very reasonable man. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not uh, begging for money, by the way. <laughs> just just will make it clear. Uh, I'm not begging for money. I'm just saying that um, I would like to do that. I just don't have time. Right, I don't have resources to do that. That's what I'm saying. It's just like, I would like to do that, but I mean, how I'm going to be doing that? I'm going to do that as a content. Well, I mean, I... By the nature of my content, I have to constantly switch the projects and it's probably not going to work. But anyway, I can make the demo, I can make a proof of concept and send to Raysan and ask him what he thinks about that. Uh, right, so, and that's about it. Right. Um, how do you know all the different intricacies of so many different languages? Like, how do you know initializing variables with undefined is better than this? I don't. This is just arbitrary decision out of my ass. <laughs> right, okay. So, actually, yeah. What happened? Um, so, I suppose when we uh, focused out, when we focused out, the scheduling of the frames actually stopped. So... Right, and maybe something something messed up the delta time. That's my hypothesis. Something probably messed up the delta time. <clears throat> um, what's interesting is that you can even implement things like load images and everything, right? Because you can do actual fetches when you load an image. Uh, right, image load or load image you can do an actual fetch and then instead of well you can return a structure right um yeah there's a lot of things you can do right you can do an actual fetch then you can load it into the memory of raylib right and yeah give give that thing to you right so i don't really see what kind of functions you cannot implement in here anything like OpenGL related can be implemented. Like it's a lot of work actually. Like it's a lot of work, but it's doable. And at the end of that work, I think Rayleigh would be a better library, much better library. And it will follow its spirit of simplicity, even in the web. Audio, uh, audio. I think it's possible. I mean, web does does have audio API. I think, I think it does have audio API. It's just like. I suppose the main problem with this approach is that you have to throw away like all of the dependency uh, of Rayleigh as of right now, right? So you just have to throw away literally everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the main problem. That's probably the uh, the main like setback. And you kind of need like a separate, like it's a, it's a se completely separate implementation, separate from everything. And you need to even maintain that implementation separately. So that could be the major setback for this approach. Uh, but yeah. So if Raylib used this, I would use Raylib for web. Because it relies heavily on the on scripting. I probably won't use Raylib for that. <laughs> Though uh, I may actually for my projects i may implement this small set of uh, ray leap specifically to just keep them running in the browser that is something that i can do uh right so that could be feasible all right so anyway i guess that's it for today thanks everyone who's watching me right now i really appreciate that i hope today's stream was educational right so i do rant a lot about web and the modern software I do rant a lot, and uh, people are aware of that. And uh, But also, on the other hand, I'm making sure that I'm also solving problems, right? You see, I'm ranting about mscripting, I'm ranting about web and stuff like that, but I also proposed a better way, didn't I? And I made it work, right? So, yeah, every time you think, oh, he's ranting a lot, I also solve problems, right? So me ranting and complaining is part of the process, right? So I switch myself into this like hypercritical mode so it's easier for me to understand problems and solve them, right? Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's it for today. 
Thanks everyone for watching, and I see you all on the next recreation programming session with Azusa.